That was surprisingly serious and positive. I thought it was going to be a bit more goofy, jokey, but the message was strong and it came across super genuine. That was a great interview. Anthony cut it well. Um, did you guys plan coordinating outfits? No, we did not. Also, never coordinate outfits with Anthony because his, his fits are incredible. Like, he, he would, he outfitted me every time. You know what I mean? Um, finish the video. That's it. That's my favorite thing is like when people are like, you're a product of nepotism. It's like, yes, I am. I recognize it. And I talk about it regularly. Mm -hmm. Dude, nobody would watch you if you're not hot. I'm like, thing to thing. <laughs> I like how they can't help but compliment you while yeah, they're trying to like, criticize you. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, dude, you're so successful. <laughs> you're so hot and, and successful. Like, and thanks. I mean, I, I, I do. I do recognize that I'm like an incredibly fortunate person. And incredibly handsome. Well, I don't think so, but thank you. <laughs> But that's nice of you to say. Hey, um, you know, from one himbo to another, I got I got to lay it down. Thank you. Yeah. Hit it. So uh, there's a video out there, and I happen to be in it. The video is titled "I Spent a Day with Hassan Piker Unraveling the Controversy." That video this was show with is Anthony Padilla. That's right. Now, should we watch this now? Should we wait for this for tomorrow? Should we save it for tomorrow? I don't know. I feel like everyone's going to watch it before me already. People have already been texting me about how I've appeared in this video, and they've. They, they watched it, and I'll just say, I'll just start off by saying this. This might shock you, but we did not spend the entire day together. Take with that, ever you will. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see. Did Anthony give you COVID or the other way around? My friend, this was months ago. Um, you will recognize that it was months ago because the controversy that we're discussing is probably old. I don't even remember which one it was, but okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blast this. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. We're gonna. Hey man, been here for a year now. I've lost 130 pounds since I started watching because of your basic advice on diet. Thanks, Hassel. Holy f dude, congratulations. God damn. Also, a standing lamp. Thank you for the five of the subs. Congratulations. Big dubs for you, my friend. I'm proud of you. Asshole. Okay? Yeah. Keep it going. You know, I've, I've, um, I've been also accomplishing my fitness goals that I've set for myself, and I'm very happy. And nothing. You can never substitute the happiness that you get from reaching uh, new physical limits that you've set for yourself. So, congratulations, Chatter. I'm proud of you from like two months ago you don't feel like you look as good as you do now so we'll see how i look in this i don't even remember but also on top of that anthony is such a beautiful human that i'm going to look ugly next to him regardless anyway here it is first of all this is the thumbo okay this is the thumbelina for it fucking blast this shit all right let's do it Sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. What do you got? Let me see. That's I don't wild. Like, it yeah. won't even fit. Got oh, it fit my pinky. Oh, damn. That went on my biggest finger. My name's Anthony Padilla, and I spent a day with Hassan Piker to uncover the truth about how amassing over 2 million followers on Twitch and becoming the top political pundit of our generation has changed the trajectory of his life, and how nearly everything he does is considered so controversial that entire hate campaigns have been constructed against him. Hello, Hassan. What's going on? <laughs> you are gaining an average of one million followers a year on Twitch. Okay. Right? I, I don't know. <laughs> now, over the past two years, each year you've had a high of almost a quarter of a million concurrent viewers. Why do you think so? That tweet he used for the hate was from a stan? Yeah. Uh, that's the problem, chat, isn't it? Remember how we talked about that? About how, like... It's virtually impossible to distinguish who's like a stan making fun of like haters making, uh, you know, psychotic shit. And then it turns into like a negative spiral regardless, like with Austin Ox. Maybe we need to like keep that into this stream or something and not outside. Maybe we should as a community, uh, you know, keep our outside memes just positive. Keep it posy, you know, like my. Like my COVID. Uh, test okay keep it positive you know what i'm saying got him your chair looks like it's for ants so many people are drawn to watch you people are not very honest about why things are terrible everybody for the most part feels a little worse overall year over year i think a lot of people feel angry i try to direct their anger at the system rather than individuals and explain to them why they feel the way that they do use that anger that you feel Boy, towards months, more baby, productive you. avenues instead of getting upset at wealth inequality in the system 
try to change the system. I uh, have an empathetic worldview that centers around uplifting marginalized people on not only the basis of identity, like uh, whatever oh, yeah. kind of marginalization that they experience, but also class, which is something that is devoid from the American conversation most of the mm -hmm. time. As long as you are willing to learn, as long as you're willing to change, then you're welcome. I'm, I'm going to talk to you and yeah. try to educate you. Right, right. Because yeah, I think that that is how you change people's minds. And I think I've been relatively successful at, mm -hmm. you know, deprogramming a lot of people's like prior uh, confirmations, mm -hmm. uh, prior uh, attitudes and beliefs. Do you think this is part of why you are seen as such a controversial figure? Yeah, for sure. This is like centuries of, of wiring people to certain way. On the one hand, someone can sedate you into thinking like, no, everything is normal, it's the best way. And then on the other hand, you have someone who's like, no, you should be angry at the system. It kind of spoils the game for a lot of people who would rather maintain that stability there's a concerned effort of like presenting me as more controversial than i actually would be yeah. it's the age-old narrative that uh you have been able to create which is socialist but uh, he's a hypocrite because he has uh, nice things mm -hmm. like that's unacceptable it's a poverty call it's supposed to be a poverty mm -hmm. call it's stupid can you list some of the controversies that you've been a part of. Oof. I don't know if we have time, sure. but uh, yeah, I just, know you gotta go stream for 12 hours. So <laughs> yeah, we can just like do a full list. <laughs> One of my first big controversies was America deserved 9-11. I'm saying it. America deserved 9-11, dude. I'm Boy, sure lots so of people much. watching right now are happy to hear that I have someone on the show that said America deserved 9-11. I mm -hmm. talked about all this stuff, and that obviously was the reason why I said it's blowback. Like, we funded the mm -hmm. same people that did 9-11, and we continue to work with the same people, the government, that uh, played a way, way more fundamental role in 9-11 than Afghanistan or Iraq. Literally, there was like eight documentaries, I think, that came out in the 20th anniversary of 9-11 that described all of that. So I had a lot of my friends even, they were like, I kind of hated what you had to say back then, but now I totally understand what you were talking about. Why do you think it is that these documentaries can say the exact same thing as you, but not get any blowback right because they video. didn't say it in my language. <laughs> like, let's be real. I mean, I'm gonna be fair here. Okay? Really, they didn't say America deserved 9 no. 11? No, they didn't. Do you regret <laughs> using the language? No. Specifically? Not even, no, not even remotely. I think it was a matter of being taken out of context. It very quickly went into a subreddit. They blasted it off there, and then Keemstar picked it up, and then Fox News picked it up. Mm. And it became a huge news story in a 24 hour cycle. And they think that I am a supporter because I'm Muslim and I'm socialist, like I'm a communist terrorist sympathizing Muslim. This is what the, what the, what the overarching narrative was. Mm -hmm. And not that like America's foreign policy is directly responsible for 9-11. There was a period of, of stability and not being canceled for a while. Post 2020, the election cycle ended, some positive coverage came out of me, you know, uh, doing well and like i guess leading the zoomer flock in politics and immediately that's when people are like no f this guy mm -hmm. <laughs> it's time again what ended up happening is yeah i bought a house i'm sorry i'm that's, sorry that's guys stop i mean i know i saw i saw the headlines yeah stop. the irony of course is that like i've been living in the same neighborhood for like eight years mm -hmm. so instead of renting i bought a house and that was deemed unacceptable by people <laughs> no one in my community was like oh man i'm giving this guy five dollars a month you're mean to tell me that he's buying stuff with that money no no no, no. we wanted you to to go fund other people's gofundmes yeah and it's like which i do some public and and you know most private now i do it more publicly mm -hmm. because i i feel kind of gross about it but like it's just you have to do it people were saying like why don't you lobby the government for socialism very funny that people think like i have a fraction of the power yeah. that like literally any like run of the mill hundred millionaire has right. i don't even have a fraction of that power mm. at a really old and still have a really old toyota camry 20 uh 2010 so the, uh, v6 damn you went all the way though yeah that so i had that for like 10 years i'm 30 i want to get a nice car mm. i have enough money to midlife get. crisis age range yeah I, I wanted to get it before i wanted to get ahead mm. of that so you know i got a i got a porsche take in i did it publicly this time because i was like i gotta do this privately because yeah. there's no reason it's gonna seem like you're trying to hide it and then they were still mad because last time they were like he was trying to hide that he had a house like mm. piece of shit hypocrite and then they were like he did this publicly he's flexing <laughs> there is no right way to use to spend your money no really? absolutely not there's just it's more so about trying to figure out another new way to be like i don't like this person yeah here's how uh, i'm going to justify that
What was your childhood like? I was a nerdy kid. Born in the U.S., then moved to Turkey pretty yeah. quickly. Uh, I was in a marabou. It's America. like a weeboo for like a wee. Amer mm. Yeah. You know, I, I would, like, my hands on anything that was, like, American, and I would love it. I would, like, learn about it. What were it. your favorite American things to get your hands on? Snacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Desserts. Yeah. Oreos. <laughs> Oreos. Yeah. The American delicacy. You joke because, like, you have an abundance of it. Yeah. But I think privately is morally the right way. No one needs to watch people spend money. Dude, I'm a content creator shut up like morally that's your own morals okay i have no problem with that 100 percent. like when i came to america you have the power to get me an average chatter to start canvassing for the working family party of philadelphia kendra books at the state rep at large i'm here because of you Hassan. i love it i feel uh, well involved thanks for the socialist motivation you inspire us thank you guys without you what i do is meaningless okay i know i say this all the time it's not just bullshit without you what i what i do is meaningless i would still be yelling I was yelling the exact same shit when I had 30 people watching. I was yelling the exact same shit when I had 500 people watching. I was yelling the exact same shit when I had 1,000 people watching. And I keep yelling, shut up, chatter, you dumb bitch. Bro, here, okay, nice. dude, take an hour off. I know you're joking, but goddamn. Um, <clears throat> you know, I uh, like what I do would be meaningless without this. Right. America for the summers. I would spend every waking moment that I had at borders i would sit there and i would read every comic book i could because i was like this is free no one is stopping me from reading these i'm the reason it's not jeff bezos i brought down barnes and noble and borders jeff yeah. bezos uh, i did the it. product of hassan piker yeah i'm his i'm his bravest wow. warrior and canceled <laughs> yeah what was life like in turkey i come from a relatively affluent family and i did see a uh, a shit ton of income uh, inequality Thanks especially when i went to public school in Turkey. i went to school with like documents. the neighborhood gardener's kid yeah. i think that was the first time where i was like oh damn this is like kind of fucked up that you have something that yeah. you were just born into this is just a kid like me but mm -hmm. they're in a situation it seems like they don't have all the cool stuff that i can have that definitely that's uh, a lot you know, impacted my perspective eating. a little bit but other than that i mean it was all right turkey was it was fine i just i spent most of my time drawing playing mm -hmm. video games. Do you still draw? No. I gave it up because my dad was like, you need to become a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. This drawing stuff is great, but you can't make kidding. money doing it. He wanted me to pursue my passion while also simultaneously telling me that like, but like you also need to make a living, you'll, you'll starve. That's what I did. I focused on, uh, you know, I focused on getting a degree and now I stream on Twitch. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. What first drew you to politics? You live on that side of the planet. You're constantly paying attention to what well, America's yeah. doing. I am a lie, you Because are. America's actions in the Middle East impact your life. It was for survival first and foremost and i think that's why a lot of people pay attention to me on an international level because they're because i'm covering american politics from the point of view of someone who didn't grow up here 19 months and i was definitely bullied. Bullied. failed artist becomes politically motivated where have i heard this story before okay well like my drawings were actually good unlike hitler's okay so we can do great things sparkles hot i guess that's um you know Thank you for this. I guess that also is the reason why my politics is, revolves around empathy rather than hatred and exclusion. A lot. When we were growing up, being a nerd wasn't like super cool, right? No, no it yeah. wasn't. Now it is. Now you're like, you got like kids on TikTok who are jacked this. They're like, yeah, I'm a nerd. No, I remember no. secretly talking about no, Pokemon with my friends in elementary school be because the other kids would look at me weird and, and you know, shun me. Yeah. Otherwise, it was not like a sick no. thing. So then imagine being that but in Turkey, where they have no frame of reference even. They just like looked at me like I was just some weirdo. I was kind of bigger. I wasn't as big as I am now. So I was always worried. And I think people saw that from where like bullies saw that and were like, I'm gonna capitalize on that insecurity. I'm gonna take down like a big guy. How do you think bullying has, has shaped who you are now? It, it, it taught me that it's, the reason why they're doing it is because they are deeply flawed. Did you see that when you were young? I think I saw it when I got older. I realized looking back that it was their own personal insecurities. Growing up, you also always questioned authority. Was that something that was instilled within you? Is that something that developed? I kept going with the with streak I had in me of like not wanting uh, to, to live under the oppressive thumb of my parents. <laughs> Even though they gave you the privileged life that you 100%, were yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. I think that there was, like, flaws in their parenting, obviously, that I recognize now. They wouldn't let me be on MSN Messenger because they thought, like, a pedophile would 
uh, you know, steal me. Can't even communicate with my friends. Like this sucks. Yeah. They wouldn't let me play online games. So I had to like find ways around that. Of course, uh, growing uh, under the Erdogan regime's inception in Turkey, you know, a 20 plus year long uh, regime now, I realized like, oh shit, this sucks. Like I do not like conservatism right. at all. I right. despise it. Came to the United States in 2009 to go to college. I wanted to go to Miami because nice weather and I wanted to party. So I went to the University of Miami for a year, living like this sheltered life with my family to like being 18 years old and being treated as an adult because you're in college. Developed an unhealthy uh, uh, attitude about alcohol. I was a promoter in Miami, University oh, of Miami. I uh, promoted for nightclubs there. It was just like a way for me to be able to go to nightclubs and drink for free. These were not nightclubs and they were plus 18 avenues ventures allegedly oh because you're 18 holy f <laughs> you were not the 18 year old mm -hmm. that did not get the 18 yes. year olds to not go to the club yes exactly how did your experience in the u.s compare to your expectations because the freedom the abundance like everything was great you know i'm a degenerate i'm a hedonist it was awesome uh -huh. on all of those avenues and then i became an adult uh -huh. once i left college i was like oh this sucks i came to la was very lucky I couldn't find a job, but at least my uncle had uh, an opportunity for me to intern for his YouTube channel. My salary was abysmally low, living in the kitchen of a fraternity house. That's when I was like, oh shit, maybe this like America stuff that they were talking about, like maybe it was bullshit midway through. No, I am not a OG. I am not a OG Florida man. Do not say this. Do not. Okay, f it. I, I will take New Jersey over Florida. I am a, I am not a Florida man. I'm a New Jersey man, okay? Ride or die, baby. New Jersey till I die. I bleed scarlet red. Not start, no, 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 no. I am not a Florida man. I am not. I am not a Florida man. Through, you know, my content creation uh, part, I started getting better at it. The internal recognition was not there at all though. Uh, so that was like a big chip on my shoulder and it constantly felt like an uphill battle. So I was like, I need to do something for myself. And because of that, I, I guess I was like constantly, constantly working on improvement that uh, because of those goals, I was like too busy to even care about, you know, what my, what my financial circumstances were. January, 2020, I started the election cycle, COVID caused everybody to stay indoors. Yeah. George Floyd uh, protests were happening and everyone wanted to understand what was going on. And they realized like, oh, there's a dude who's literally live all the time. This and then you were like, cool, 3,600 hours this year. Yeah. Like, full throttle. That's like, like yeah. 10 hours a day. Pretty much like waking up, streaming, going to sleep, streaming. How do you deal with the waves of negativity? I internalize it and I just, <laughs> ugh, I hold on I to can it. See all that. I can see a lot of tension in your shoulders yeah. right now. You just I, hold it right here. Yeah, I hold it right here. And then I, and I work out and I get angry and then I, you know, mm. fire off on some random unsuspecting mm. person in my chat. I don't have time to pre-watch every video that I want to play on stream because I'm too busy f***ing your mother. Sorry. Are you ever trolling? On purpose oh always and do people believe that you actually you know sinclair thank you for the tank of the subs conservative character brother this is a right wing broadcast you mean to tell me a libtard would be a korea veteran i hope they do yeah. like hank pecker I, I want them to believe that that's like a real person yeah. they're conservative pecker, i did not know his name pecker yeah that's my name i'm in here in a libtard studio with bisexual lighting <laughs> i did it just i did yeah. it just for you hank people Sometimes I have a hard time understanding what my political position is because they're they're so used to people Being being like, the I love the Democrats or I love the Republicans and I'm yeah. like, we both of them, them they're both terrible. When people hear me like absolutely shitting on Nancy Pelosi, they yeah, probably think bro. I'm like a Republican. But then also on top of that, when I do that accent, they're like, wait a minute, this guy. You don't see AOC yeah. going out there playing a Republican character. Well, she's a politician, <laughs> you know? But people look at you like you're a politician. I know, it's ridiculous. I'm not. I am literally a dumb himbo on Twitch. Like. I make jokes about, you know, Chrissy. Yeah. yeah, which, you know, we can understand why. <laughs> so it, it, it is ridiculous that people like hold yeah. me to that standard that I myself yeah. do not hold myself to. I, like, yeah. I see myself as an entertainer, a worldview, and, and I'm honest about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, ultimately, I also like to have fun. And I think that people, uh, people want you to be serious all the time. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, no, we, we want to talk about Cussy, okay? Yeah. We, we want to get deep in that Cussy. Oh, God, I just... <laughs> What have I done? <laughs> Leading up to this interview, I was a little nervous. I'm like, Hassan, this this guy is intimidating as for some reason. 
Have you been told that before? Yes. I don't know why. I think I'm like a, I'm like a teddy bear, but I mean, it could be the the six foot four uh, bodybuilder demeanor. That's literally part of the reason why I paint my nails. I think it makes me look less intimidating. Is that why you wear a choker? <laughs> I like accessorizing. I think men don't have a lot of options to accessorize. Yes. It's messed up. I think accessorizing sucks, and men sh men shouldn't do it. No, you have some <laughs> sick jewelry. What do you got? Let me see. You want that's that's all for one finger. You have three for three for one, one finger. finger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wild. It, it yeah. won't even fit. It, what, are your fingers too meaty? Yeah. You got oh, it sausage? fit my pinky. Oh, damn. That went on my biggest finger. <laughs> I love that, dude. Now you're the choker because you're a super freak. Yeah, that too. Um, Who's the guy in that video? He looks so sexy. You could say he's from New Jersey, but then we see you at the camera and we think he's from Florida. No, I'm from New Jersey. I'm not from Florida. I'm not a Florida man. Okay. I don't know why people are saying this. Actually, no one is saying that. Not a Florida man, by the way. Florida man says America deserved 9-11 in a video game he added. Stop it. Stop this right now. You stop with this. This is nonsense. Okay. I would rather be from New Jersey than be recognized as a Florida man. Do you understand? Do you pride yourself in kind of shattering the expectations for, uh, you know, party divides and party expectations? I definitely transcend beyond like uh, you know, party loyalty. Bro, if I saw you in public, I would cry. You could trip over me and stomp me to death without noticing too tall, too big, scary man. <laughs> what the f dude? <laughs> that would not happen. Don't worry, chatter. Guilty for sure. Yeah. It's not a surprise to me when democrats wait hold on uh, you know, i gotta see I gotta divides and party expectations i definitely transcend beyond like uh you know, party loyalty for sure yeah. it's not a surprise to me when democrats and republicans regularly find bipartisan consensus for things that actually matter mm -hmm. materially things that we disagree on are really impactful and really important except they are what is known as wedge issues mm -hmm. created specifically for the purpose of causing division and making it seem like a party is different than the other party. Mm -hmm. It's all cultivated. It's it's mass outrage and mass panic that you're causing, that you're creating, creating this division so you can get people to vote for you rather than the other side. Why do you think everything is so divisive? It sounds like a lot of the beliefs of Americans in general do line up, but there is this idea that we are 100% divided on everything. The different kinds of cookies that you buy at the aisle is owned by the same company, but they got to make it seem like they're different, right? In the grand scheme of things, like those wedge issues do have serious impact on the the people that we're talking about, whether it's yeah. immigrants, uh, whether it's trans kids, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's, uh, you know, gay kids, whether it's uh, women that want to get an abortion or have uh, autonomy over their own mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, these are these are definitely things that are impactful to those individuals, but ultimately they're perfectly crafted in a way that that creates division. And I noticed you mentioned some things and then you were like, well, not everyone. Do you feel like that's a reflex for you now after streaming for so many hours for you to kind of over explain your position on things now? Yeah, there is that uh, type of speaking. Yeah, where uh, you reflexively defend positions that like no human being would ever think you have to defend. And I do that all the time. I have to constantly and consistently qualify every single sentence that I put out there, especially because I am constantly under the the mindset that there are people out there that are watching every single thing that I'm saying and doing and will use that to, to clip it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And- No! Florida man steps on fan. Florida man says, Men need more ways to accessorize as he steps on fan. So manipulative, Hassan. Oh, God. My favorite, dude. My favorite type. My favorite type of person is the one that, like, sends a winky face and thinks we're, like, thinks we're, we're I know who this person is or I, I know what they're talking about. We've talked about this. This is a very specific type of posting, okay, in the chat. That the moment that I see it, I'm like, oh god, okay, I'm banning you for your own sake. Please get help and get therapy, please. And make it seem like I believe in the the opposite of what I actually believe. It's insane that I have to do that, but it's just the part of the f job. Everybody, stop! Stop winking. Single thing that I'm saying and doing, and we'll use that to to clip it in a different way mm -hmm. and and make it seem like I believe in the, the opposite of what I actually believe. It's insane that I have to do that, but it's just the part of the f job. Mm -hmm. It's the way I see it. Most normal people, they probably think like, what the f why does this guy keep like 
saying he he hates Putin. Well, it's because like you know people will literally say no, you love Putin, right? And right. we'll cut it in a way to make it seem like that. You, you say you like oranges, and someone will pop out of somewhere and be like, oh, that means you f***ing hate apples. Like, how dare you? I love apples. You are angry at me for eating apples. Why do you hate right. me? I have a, a Vladimir Putin is bad sign. It's like. <laughs> flipping on the corner of the screen all day, every day. So no one can clip it and be like, see? No, but they still do. They still clip it. Even when it has the- Yeah, because it doesn't matter. What you see in front of your eyes is unimportant. As long as like you have a preconceived notion of a particular person. And I think it kind of breaks people's minds when they see someone like you posing with a gun. Before we get more into that, I wanna let you know that you can watch other episodes with prominent figures like I spent a day with Mia Khalifa, Corpse, Amaranth, Dream, and so many others here on YouTube or on the completely uncensored podcast version of the show by Damn, clicking the link down in we the got description sexy. Below. And I'd also like to thank Honey for sponsoring this episode and supporting us in continuing to improve this series. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one that it finds to your To be cars. fair, putting a Chiron there doesn't but mean shit, lol. You don't have to stare I mean... at that empty discount code box every time you're at checkout because if Honey finds a coupon that works, a Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupon. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. What's the channel? The channel is Anthony Padilla's channel, folks. Delivery. Honey has personally saved- Anthony Padilla's channel. Um, this is the channel. Um, on Smosh, I think. I don't really- I wasn't on YouTube back then, but- Saved me a f ton of money when I venture into my online buying trends, including the new shoes, Hassan and I- Everybody stop saying- stop- Stop saying it not subscribed. I just subscribed. Okay, shut up. I'm not very good on YouTube. To popular fashion brands and what food delivery. Say? Honey has personally saved me a f ton of money when I venture into my online buying trance, including the new shoes Hassan and I will be wearing on our way to Himbo Haven. Again, Honey is free and it installs in just a few seconds. So if you want to do yourself a solid and also support this series, get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Padilla. Again, it's free. And I'm only gonna say this one more time. So listen closely. Go to joinhunting.com slash Padilla and you'll be directly supporting this series. Now back to the world of Hassan Biker. And yeah, the reason why I played this ad is because at the top of the hour, there's an ad break and it's a 60 second one. And if you no longer wanna see those ads on this broadcast, if you want an ad-free broadcasting experience, then all you need to do is subscribe, which you can, of course, do for $5. You can subscribe for $5 or you can subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime. Um, that is by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you will get one free Prime subscription a month and hopefully you will use your free Prime subscription on your favorite broadcaster, i.e. me. Here is the one minute ad break now. And also probably have gifted, gotten a bunch of the gifted ones that are coming in. Uh, but if you're not lucky, you make your own luck. Thank you, fuck you mean for the five get the subs and it's top of the hour for the five and Dara006 for the other five. I'm 15 people that no longer see the ads. Here's the woman ad break now. Boom. Double himbo ad break. Nice. Exactly. And I think it kind of breaks people's minds when they see someone like you posing with a gun. You know, they're like, oh, uh, I guess that means that you are uh, alt right. And then you're saying these things <laughs> that are against that. And then they're like, uh, I don't know what that means. You're right. I mean, I, I, I enjoy shooting guns. I think guns are fun. Mm -hmm. They're but they're murder weapons. They're, that's the only purpose of a gun is to murder. We got to dispel this notion that like liberals don't like guns. I think liberals like guns too. It's just like America. We have more guns than we have people. Yeah. It's crazy out here. It's it's bananas. They should definitely stop that. Put the toothpaste back in the tube. It's very hard to do. I tried it. We got to do it. We got to yeah. figure it out. And it goes back to, again, our lack of community and our alienation from our labor and our alienation from one another. The only type of cultural signifier that we have is our commodity consumption mm -hmm. what you're wearing what you consume going to applebee's mm -hmm. are you a fan of diet coke or are you a fan of diet pepsi and in many ways these things become attached to identity yes that is exactly what it is and guns are a part of that i love guns brother you know i'm a gun guy that's the republican dude version of a gucci the idea that like people are going to come and break into your house that's why you need an ar-15 for self-defense is idiotic because anyone who has ever shot a gun knows the ar-15s are terrible for home defense you will literally blow through eight of your walls and probably shoot the neighbor if you try to do a self-defense with an ar-15 mm -hmm. unless you are getting uh, broken into your home by like a Nicaraguan death squad. And then they're gonna make a movie about your life. Unless you're John Wick, you don't need to yeah. 
do self defense. You, you, a gun, a pistol will do, uh, or or better than that, the best uh, home self defense tool is the shotgun. You are constantly discussing and questioning beliefs. I try. I, I, I question myself a lot too. People say I'm confident. I have crippling self doubt. Like so much self-doubt. What if I'm getting something wrong? What if I will get this wrong? What if I'll get that wrong? I don't want to misinform people. And I do get things wrong. Like the greatest example of this is the invasion of Ukraine. I was incredibly confident that Russia would not invade Ukraine because of all of the reasons why that invasion is going south right now. I, I demonstrated a level of confidence that I should not have. When you deviate away from that and you get something wrong, people that want to be right will never let you forget that and will constantly harp on it and will constantly use that to like undermine your perspective. There were a lot of people that for the first couple days of the invasion, when I was doing my coverage, would come in specifically to be like, hold this L. I'm like, dude, there are people dying on screen. They Me. wanna celebrate your loss? Yeah, what's wrong with you? You must get recognized a lot. Yeah, I do get recognized, yes. I love it. I don't have any issue with it. I owe everything to my fans, everything. I would be nothing without them. And your haters. Live. Not my haters. <laughs> they can they can rot in hell. Okay? They get you views. No, no, no. XQ cow TFT. Ha ha ha. You're so fake. Yeah. Thing you you uh popped in to say it just at this very moment. You know. So edgy and cool. You're so edgy, dude. You literally like XQC. What the? F Are you okay, Mr. Juicer fan? Are you okay, Juicer? Jackie Jean. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. Are you overdosing on the juice? Are you up past your bedtime? Do you feel like you have no place right now? Do you feel homeless? Because XQC is not live. My juicer is not online. Oh no. <laughs> I, I don't want their views. That's the one. Liking XQC seems much more acceptable than liking Hasanabi. Yeah, the only reason why it's like that, at least on this platform, is because he doesn't respond to every psychotic hater like I do. That's it. That's the reason. You know what I mean? That, that's why. Also because he's the biggest streamer, so most people are afraid of uh, shitting on him and making videos about shitting on him. Um, coming in here to hate on you despite you actually being friends with Felix? I mean, I would hate that too if I was like, if I really wanted to be friends with the juicer himself and then there's some guy that I like have been conditioned into hating uh, on screen who's actually friends, uh, who's actually friends with the person I want to be friends with, I'd be mad at him too, you know? You. Nothing without them. And I your haters. Live. Not my haters. <laughs> they can they can rot in hell. Okay? They get you views. No, 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 no. I, I don't want their views. That's the one thing I realize is that if you're constantly on the internet, a lot of your interactions are unfortunately painted by those people that uh, can can swarm a comment section, make you think, oh man, I wonder how many other people now feel this way about me, even though it's completely untrue. And then I go outside. And then I meet people and I talk to them. And then I remember again, like, oh no, these people on the internet are not real people. But ultimately I, yeah, I just got to maintain that attitude always. And, yeah. and think about, you know, the real world. And in yeah. the real world, either A, no one gives a shit or B, if they do, they're usually very positive. Mm -hmm. Never had a negative interaction with someone in the real world. Yeah. I mean, I hope that doesn't change, but when you reach a certain size, you do have the opportunity to make changes in people's lives. And it's something that I often take for granted or forget about, but it's, it's awesome to see it in real life in public. That's what makes it worth it. What's next for Hassan? Is there anything you could hint? Just what I've been doing, honestly. Yeah. I, I just, everybody always asks like, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? Like, have you, you been offered a show yet? Yeah. Yeah. And plus. I have plenty yeah. of times and yeah. I don't like that. I don't want to, I love what I do. I'm very fortunate. You know, I love having a place where I can go to every day and talk about politics every day. I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna expand. I don't wanna grow. I'll grow, but as long as I can grow in my own pace, as long as I can continue doing what I'm doing mm. and not change that, not be beholden to a larger company or investors mm. or anything like that, then I'm fine. I'm fine yeah. with that growth. Well, there you have it. I spent today with Hassan Piker and it's made me realize how everything we do, wear and believe all make up our identity and anything that threatens those things can feel like a personal affront to our well-being. Maybe the world would be filled with much less rage if we were all encouraging of remaining open-minded and evolving, 
even if it were to threaten that was good you wish it was longer it was it is longer i think that there's it's probably like the actual interview was like three hours dude we talked for a lot we talked for a while i wonder if he uh, he kept the longer bits in the podcast and those things that we once thought defined us Bro, when I see you on the street, it's on site. Debate me, I'll yell from afar. Naruto, I'll run to you and challenge you to a scrimmage in the marketplace of ideas. Then we will shake hands and I will happily, I will be happy with my broken wrist. <laughs> that was good, Interman. You're an interesting guy and I don't give a fuck with you as long as you stay healthy and live a happy life. He's not cute to me anymore. Me? Sorry if this was weird and parasocial, but did you two kiss? Yes. Cute. What is going on? Old Smosh was great. I had no idea. Anthony had a channel that's awesome. Yeah. Got the Smosh chatter coming out the woodworks. That was surprisingly serious and positive. I thought it was going to be a bit more goofy jokey, but the message was strong and it came across super genuine. That was a great interview. Anthony cut it well. Um, did you guys plan coordinating outfits? No, we did not. Also, never coordinate outfits with Anthony because his, his fits are incredible. Like, he, he would, I mean, he out he outfitted me every time. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, finish the video. That's it. That's my favorite thing is like when people are like, you're a product of nepotism. It's like, yes, I am. I recognize it. And I talk about it regularly. Mm -hmm. Dude, nobody would watch you if you're not hot. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I like how they can't help but compliment you yeah, while they're trying to like, criticize you. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, dude, you're so successful. <laughs> you're so hot and, and successful. Like, and Thanks. I mean, I... I, I I do. I do recognize that I'm like an incredibly fortunate person and incredibly handsome. Well, I don't think so, but thank you. <laughs> that's nice of you to say. Hey, um, you know, from one himbo to another, I got to I got to lay it down. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He he's dope. Anthony's great. Bueno beans. Thank you for the five get the subs. Um do you remember any parts of the conversation that didn't make it that you wish wasn't cut? Um no, I think they got the gist of it. They did a really good job. That was like a Hulk fist bumping Thor. Your hand is huge compared to his. Are you ever going to get him on stream? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Seems like he's genuinely as nice as he is off screen as he is on screen. Yeah, he is. 100%. I think I pop off more when I'm actually... The Owen children build a lamb hospital our Yorkshire farm. Literally like the OG channel 5 and not the Andrew channel 5. What are you talking about? Like some British shit. Um, how's the COVID feeling uh, today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, yeah, by the way, go, you know, blast this, show it some love, you know what I mean? Uh, watch it, write some positive stuff in the comments before it gets swarmed with negative shit, you know what I, you know what I mean? Because I'm sure there will be people who will look at this video and use it as an opportunity to, once again, um, not let me live a f moment of happiness and, and, I don't know, be like, dude, he f sucks though, like, you f idiot, why did you, everybody hates him. <laughs> Why did you do this? I can't anymore. Very hot. Thank you. Oh, fuck. bug hit. Did you go to Coachella, dude. I did go to Coachella. Spent a day with a Psalm Piker unraveling the controversy. Cancelled. A marabou. Pussy. <laughs> Your hair looks extra poofy today. Yeah, it's because I used the shampoo on it for. Fuck it, I'm saying it, dude. Your nose was very cute in that video. I can't help myself. Fuck it, I'll be parasocial for a second. Thank you. Did you blow dry? No. My liege, here in my hands lies a great videograph videograph letter for thee. It explains to us peasants the dialectical materialism. Enjoy, sire. 48 minutes long. Why the political compass is wrong. Establish an accurate model of political ideology. In the past 32 streams, you've played video games a total of three times, and it was all Fortnite. Weeby will be like, dude, I can't believe how parasocial your stands are that's really up they should be a marxist leninist and totally devoid of such things like me and then we'll turn around and cut this edited like footage together to drive a point and a narrative that i do not play video games on on my platform also fortnite is poggers i troll a lot in chat but that's all love man you're gonna go to streaming you don't deserve all the hate you get online it's not that bad i think the hate i've been getting online has like diminished greatly the issue is just like whenever i have moments um Whenever I have like positive spikes going upwards, that's when haters come back because they are because I think they just like forget and they move on to the next person to troll and harass and do their coordinated harassment campaigns on. But then when I'm popping off again, they're like, oh, fuck this guy. It's time. It's time to ruin his mood. You know what I mean? After the, watching this video and looking into Hassan's political views, I can without a doubt say he's a literal personification of my views and I was never able to express and feel terrible. I found out about him so late. That's awesome. I hope people don't swarm him and be like, he's a piece of shit, though. Did you? And you are, too.
you it's also weird that that is like it is weird that actual florida man a song piker florida man beats atm says it gave too much cash yeah i did that got trolling problems with twitch chat interaction interactive game questions of ethics yeah i i mean look if i were to look here i'm sure there's like already some deranged shit going on this show is mean? Anthony's reaction to Vladimir Putin's bad sign, a sign that to put up is hilarious and shows how weird Twitch politics is to normal people. Russian waifu, being a socialist isn't something to be proud of. <laughs> Soviet Union didn't work. There we go. Said you might play Detroit again. Yeah, that's true. How they get you? Oh yeah, let me comment on this video. What should I say? Avert your gaze ashen one. Looking for hate? No, I'm not. Found a positive comment, my liege. Where I looked them up after this vid, socialism and dialectical materialist analysis is poggers okay you wrote that yourself there are you in dynamic jab 13 thank you for the 10 gifted subs um, yeah i can't wait wait to have at anthony can you not add on youtube isn't that how this works like this can't add on youtube like that i'm such a boomer Fuck. only at the beginning is it can you do it on the beginning no it's not letting me do it in the beginning either only works with replies oh okay got it so i can't wait to can't wait to have you on stream just comment, man. I have to pee. We have a message from the Stan Lol. On the hunt, I'm sorry for memeing. If it if it you're your feelings, I will try to be nicer now and hopefully the weird orbiters won't take my funny haha memes out of context. I mean it's okay, you guys can do whatever you want. Um be cognizant that like, you know, your memes become dreams, and by dreams I mean my nightmare, okay? Sometimes. Stop scrolling, my lord. The comments, they go deep and dark, my lord. You mustn't continue, sire. Why do you guys write like that now? Why is that the new thing? I think it's really funny. It's very stupid, but I, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna show you something incredibly cringe now. And then after that, we'll do trolley problem. Okay, how about that? That was cool. I, I feel cool as f I'm not gonna lie. That was easy peasy. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>